Hi all, Dave here. Now, I know that I mentioned in my last video that the next video I release would be the next in the Better Skepticism series. And that truly was my intention. I've started writing the script, but put it on hold when a friend sent me the link to the video we'll be looking at today. The video was one released yesterday, at the time of me starting this script anyway. And it's from Creaky Blinder. Now, I don't really know much about Creaky Blinder, apart from the fact that he did a lot of stuff on Flat Earthers. I've only really seen one video from him where he discusses Welsh slang. I will say, though, he seems like a good guy with a lot of charisma. Way more than I've got, anyway. I'd like to say that I feel bad for critiquing a fellow atheist, but, well, have you met me? I feel worse about critiquing a fellow Welshman. But I never know when to shut my mouth. The video in question is one where Creaky Blinder is responding to a Christian video where the creator discusses the burden of proof in relation to atheists. The Christian also mentions the definition of atheism. There's a lot that Creaky Blinder says that I agree with, but there's also a lot that I disagree with. He makes a lot of bad claims, and it is those bad claims that I'm going to look at here. Like I said, the video from Creaky Blinder discusses both the burden of proof and the definition of atheism, as well as a few other things. I'll try to group the responses together just for ease of argument. Let's start with some of the claims that Creaky Blinder made about the definition of atheism, starting with this one. There's only one definition for the word atheism. So I already have a video discussing this claim called Atheism, A Tale of Two Usages. Rationality Rules has also released a similar video discussing this claim, titled The 100% Real Definition of Atheism. If you're interested in hearing a fuller breakdown of the argument for why the claim that there is one definition of atheism is wrong, then I highly recommend watching those two videos. For this video, I'll just give a brief rundown of an argument for why the claim there is only one definition of atheism is wrong. The first point to make here is that words simply don't work like that. The meanings of words come from how they are used. There is no objective authority that exists that stipulates how a word ought to be used except in certain technical circumstances. Other than that, people are free to use words how they like. At best, the argument can be, well, in this group of atheists, the word atheism is used to only mean this. Outside of that circle, there is no singular definition of atheism or atheist. Now, someone may argue for the definition of atheism, as Creaky Blinder does here. By definition, an atheist is a person who disbelieves or lacks belief in the existence of God or gods. The definition given by Creaky Blinder here is the one that you would normally get when you do a Google search for the definition of atheism. It is the definition that generally pops up first, as seen in the screenshot shown on screen now. This definition is common, sure. It is also the definition thrown out by many atheists when arguing for the true definition of atheism. The thing is, though, if you go through the actual search results and check out the definitions listed in the dictionaries, you will get varying results, such as the Cambridge definition or Collins dictionary definition. So there seems to be evidence that there are multiple definitions of the word atheism rather than the true definition of atheism or is the English dictionary telling lies as well. This alone gives pretty good indication that there is not in the true definition of atheism. When atheists claim that there is one true definition of atheism, they are making a faulty claim, and a claim that flies in the face of evidence. It's understandable why people might think there is one true definition of atheism, though. It's a claim that's often made by some of the bigger names in the atheist community, like Aaron Ra and Randolph Richardson, as well as by organizations like Canadian Atheists and American Atheists. Unfortunately, those people and organizations are pushing a false claim. As mentioned earlier, the best that can be argued is that individuals or groups only accept certain definitions. But when atheists make claims like the true definition of atheism, they are, ironically, misrepresenting atheism themselves. So that was slightly less brief than I intended to be, 
but it gets across the basics of why claims of there being one true definition of atheism are wrong. Like mentioned earlier in the video, if you want to see a deeper dive into the argument, then have a look at my video, Atheism, A Tale of Two Usages. Or if you prefer to hear it from somebody with a bigger name in the atheist community, try Rationality Rules, the 100% true definition of atheism, both of which discuss this topic. Another thing that Creaky Blinder states is that There is more than one kind of atheist. And this is something I wholeheartedly agree with. And there is ample evidence that there is more than one type of atheist. He mentions this himself when he discusses the Gnostic and Agnostic distinction. However, I do disagree with him when he says only one definition for the word atheist. While I would agree that the Gnostic and Agnostic distinctions both share a common lack of belief in God's definition of atheism, as we saw in the last section, there are other definitions of atheism as well. Those other definitions of atheism also lead to there being other definitions of atheist, such as here in the Cambridge Dictionary, or here in the Collins Dictionary or here in the entry on dictionary.com. As you can see, just as with the term atheism, the term atheist also has multiple definitions. And for much the same reason as there is not one true definition of atheism, there is not one true definition of atheist. So while I agree with Creaky Blinder that there is more than one type of atheist, I disagree about there only being one definition. With regards to different types of atheists, along with the Gnostic and Agnostic, distinction, there is also the strong hard and weak soft distinctions of atheists. With the strong hard distinction referring to those atheists that hold to the belief God does not exist definition of atheism. So when someone like Creaky Blinder says something like people are trying to the muddy the waters when it comes to the definition of an atheist, it is a false claim. The waters are already slightly muddy when it comes to the definition of atheist and atheism. There are different definitions of atheist and atheism and different types of atheists, with some using different definitions of atheism to the other. How does that saying go? Something about herding cats? There's a few more things I'd like to bring up about what Creaky Blinder says about Gnostic atheists. Here, a person that does not believe in the existence of God or gods, and they are 100% certain about that fact. He seems to be saying that agnostic atheists aren't sure about whether or not they lack a belief in gods, as it is the Gnostic atheist that lacks a belief and is 100% certain of that fact. I'm guessing what he actually means is that Gnostic atheists lack a belief in God and are 100% certain of the fact that there is no God, which seems to be supported by his words here. A Gnostic atheists are sure God doesn't exist. This seems to contradict what he says here though. But a lack of belief isn't a belief that something doesn't exist. It's just a lack of belief. If it's the case that Gnostic atheists are 100% certain of the fact that God does not exist, then it isn't the case that they just lack a belief. They not only lack a belief in God, but they hold a belief about God on top of that. And that belief is the belief that God does not exist. Agnostic atheists, according to this dictionary definition, might simply lack a belief that God exists. And it is true that they also lack a belief that God doesn't exist. The same cannot be said for the Gnostic atheist, though. At least not according to the definitions being used here. If they are 100% certain that God does not exist, then they actively believe that God does not exist. That is such a disingenuous way of saying that. Well, no, it's not a disingenuous way of putting it. If they are 100% certain of the fact that God does not exist, then it is the case that they believe God does not exist. A belief is simply some statement or proposition that we hold to be true, or think is the case, or hold as an opinion, as can be seen in the definition of belief on screen at the moment. If Gnostic atheists are 100% certain that God does not exist, then they hold the statement God does not exist to be true and think it is the case that God does not exist. They are of the opinion that it is 100% true that God does not exist. So therefore, they hold the belief that God does not exist. To hold a belief in a deliberate and positive way is to actively hold that belief. 
meaning that it is not disingenuous to say that Gnostic atheists actively hold the belief that God does not exist. While I wholeheartedly agree with Creaky Blinder that a lack of belief is not a belief that something doesn't exist, a belief that something doesn't exist certainly is a belief that something does not exist. So it is not the Christian being disingenuous here, it is Creaky Blinder himself. What he is doing is focusing on the lack of belief part of Gnostic atheism and completely ignoring the 100% certain God does not exist part. The linguistic gymnastics. Here comes from Creaky Blinder in an attempt to portray all atheists as merely lacking a belief. Another common theme that runs through Creaky Blinders video is the idea that there is no evidence for God. It mentions it a lot. It's in response to something brought up by the Christian in their video while discussing the burden of proof. The Christian states that it is perfectly reasonable for a Christian to ask an atheist why they believe that God probably does not exist. To which Creaky Blinder responds with, Because there's no evidence to show that he does. From here, Creaky Blinder goes into a discussion about how there is no evidence for God, and he repeats this several times. This, in and of itself, is a claim. It is a claim that there is no evidence for God's existence. And as Creaky Blinder puts it in another part of the video, The burden of proof falls on the shoulders of the person making the claim. You could ask something like, Is saying that there is no evidence for something making a claim really? To which the answer would simply be yes. Yes it is. Every time an atheist says something like there is no evidence for God or there is no evidence for atheists to look at, they are making a claim. They are making a claim that there is no evidence. Yeah, I know I'm claiming that there is no evidence. Or am I? Or am I just pointing it out? Well, you're not just pointing it out. You're also making the claim that there is no evidence. Just as pointing to an apple and saying that is an apple is pointing out that it is an apple, it is also claiming that it is an apple. It's just such a commonly accepted claim that very few people would dispute it or reject it. The difference in the case of the claim that there is no evidence for God is that the theist will reject that claim. So if pointing out that there is no evidence for the existence of God is also making a claim that there is no evidence for God, then you have a burden of proof for your claim. Remember what was said here? Well, the burden of proof is never on the person that rejects the claim. The burden of proof falls on the shoulders of the person making the claim. If the burden of proof is not on the one rejecting the claim, but the one making the claim, then it is not up to the theist to show that there is evidence for God's existence. It is instead on the atheist claiming there is no evidence for God. You could also argue something like, If there was a claim being made, that claim would need to be, we have not seen any evidence that shows us that God is real. However, that is a different claim, and one that requires a different burden of proof. Just as Creaky Blinder says earlier that, But a lack of belief isn't a belief that something doesn't exist. The same is true of the fact that claiming that you haven't seen evidence for God is not the same as claiming there is no evidence for God. These are two entirely different claims, both with differing supportive needs. Just as there is no evidence for atheists to look at is a different claim also. Regardless of how an atheist tries to spin it, they are making a claim. Attempting to redefine them as not claims doesn't change the fact that they are. And attempting to redefine them as not claims is simply an attempt to try and get out of their burden of proof. Speaking of burden of proof, that's another thing we see Creaky Blinder talk about a lot in his video. The burden of proof is something that I'll be covering in a future video in my Better Skepticism series, so I'll save a deep dive into the topic for that future video. For this video, I'll just focus on some of the things that Creaky Blinder mentions. Let's start with... The burden of proof is actually a legal claim and he's not wrong here, at least not completely. The burden of proof is certainly a term and concept that is used in a legal context. It is obviously also an important concept when it comes to the prosecution of parties in a court case. But it's also important when it comes to the defense as well. When Creaky Blinder says, And in legal terms, the burden of proof is on the prosecution. He is incorrect. 
The burden of proof does apply to the prosecution, but it also applies to the defense. It applies to the person trying to prove something. And in a court case, both sides are trying to prove something. In the case of the prosecution, they are trying to prove guilt. In the case of the defense, they are trying to prove that the defendant is not guilty. Or, at the very least, that the prosecution does not have a strong enough case. Creaky Blinder mentions that The burden of proof is never on the person that rejects the claim. However, think of this scenario in terms of a court case. Imagine the prosecution presenting eyewitness testimony, and pretty damning eyewitness testimony. Then, imagine the defense lawyer strolling up and saying, I reject that testimony, but adding nothing else. According to Creaky Blinder, it is not on the defense lawyer to prove anything contrary about that testimony, as they are not claiming anything about the eyewitness testimony. They are simply rejecting it. That defense lawyer would be considered a pretty bad defense lawyer for sure, as they are not actually doing any defending. The judge may also state that rejecting the eyewitness testimony is not enough. They have a burden of proof to show why that eyewitness testimony should be rejected. In a court of law, the judge assigns different burdens of proof to both the prosecution and the defense. As stated, it is the defense's job to prove their client is not guilty, or at the very least that there is not enough evidence to find them guilty. Simply stating, I reject that evidence, is not enough to discharge the defense's burden, and it also would not go down well with any jury, at least without some good reason to reject the prosecution's testimony. Claiming that something is not evidence, or that the prosecution has no evidence, would also not work without some kind of explanation for why those two things are true. Even if you say, Yeah, I know I'm claiming that there is no evidence, or am I? Or am I just pointing it out? The analogy begins to break down upon closer inspection. If the analogy is supposed to show that, like the defense in the courtroom, the atheist in discussion does not have to offer a defense of their position, then it clearly fails, as the defense in a courtroom still has to defend the innocent, or at the very least the not guilty claim, of the defendant. The judge will also assign burdens of proof to the defendant, so clearly this example of the courtroom burden of proof does not represent the atheist desire to claim that they have no burden whatsoever. It also doesn't support Creaky Blinder's assertion that in the courtroom only the prosecution has the burden of proof, as that is not analogous to a courtroom either. There's another problem with this burden of proof claim too. The arguments and discussions that people have on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and such other places are not arguments in a courtroom. So the burden of proof as it applies to a courtroom does not apply to those situations. As David Hume says, the further something is away from being alike, the less analogous that thing is. Consider the discussions and debates that happen on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and the like. There is no judge who will decide who made their case, nor is there a jury of peers who will assess the evidence and arguments who will decide who made their case. And nor is there a defendant to argue against the prosecution, as the burden of proof is only on the theist, like Creaky Blinder states in the video, and like so many other atheists we see arguing the same thing. It's also not bound by legal rules rules, courtroom rules, courtroom etiquette, or the legal framework for presenting cases. The more you look at this analogy, the less analogous we can see it is. And that's because it simply isn't analogous. The situations are just too far removed. A closer analogy to the situation that we see on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the like is that of a formal debate situation. It's also another place that the burden of proof exists within the framework that it uses. Each debater has to present an argument. Usually one argues for a claim and the other argues the opposite of the claim. Or both argue for a related claim, such as why capitalism is a better economic system and why communism is a better economic system. Yet this still doesn't quite fit. 
in the debates that atheists have with theists on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the like. There is no judge, no audience to vote on who they found most compelling and that kind of thing. There's also no formal framework for how people have to give their case. There is no presentation of evidence or argument from both sides either. And there is no formal rules for how the debate will proceed. So this analogy breaks down too, the more we look at it. Instead, what we have is one side arguing that only those making claims have a burden of proof, then arguing that only the other side is making claims, so therefore only the other side has a burden of proof, like so. Christian apologists are the ones claiming that God really exists, and by definition, the burden of proof is on them. And then when their side makes a claim, and therefore has a burden of proof according to their own rules of burden of proof, rather than discharging that burden of proof, they look for a way to argue that it is not a claim like this. Yeah, I know I'm claiming that there is no evidence, or am I? Or am I just pointing it out? And like this? If there was a claim being made, that claim would need to be, we have not seen any evidence that shows us that God is real. And like this. Saying there's no evidence for God is a statement of fact. It isn't a claim. Even though they have made all these claims like this. There's no evidence to show that he does. No evidence usually means that there isn't evidence. And the reason we think there is no evidence is because none has ever been presented. There is still no evidence for God's existence. What evidence? There is no evidence. There is no evidence for atheists to look at. There is no evidence at all. Creaky Blinder also asks this question. And are you actually saying that some atheists label themselves as agnostic just to avoid the burden of proof? And I would argue that yes, there are those that do that. Though they don't necessarily have to label themselves agnostic in order to do that. Here's an example of someone arguing that all atheists should only ever answer the question of whether God exists with I just don't believe in God, as that way there is no burden of proof. We also see in this clip that that's exactly what a Gnostic atheist is. A person that does not believe in the existence of God or gods. That Creaky Binder argues that Gnostic atheism is still just a lack of belief, even though a Gnostic atheist is... A Gnostic atheist are sure God doesn't exist. So even though a Gnostic atheist believes that God does not exist, the burden of proof is avoided by labeling that belief as a non-belief, because an atheist just lacks belief. And as stated by Creaky Blinder, But a lack of belief isn't a belief that something doesn't exist. It's just a lack of belief. So it is not just agnostic atheists that try to avoid the burden of proof. There are just lots of atheists that do all they can to avoid their burden of proof. Give me an example of one atheist saying evolution is the best explanation for morality. Okay, what you can see on screen is an example of an atheist claiming that evolution explains morality. And if you wish, you can do a search on Twitter and find other examples of atheists saying this. This kind of highlights something that I see happening a lot with other atheists. Whenever a pretty common claim made by many atheists is brought up, other atheists will deny ever having seen other atheists say it. Now, I'm not saying that Creaky Blinder is doing this here, as it's possible he's never seen it. But this tactic of denying popular claims is something that I see a lot of atheists do. So, here we are. The end of the video. There was a lot in Creaky Blinders video that I didn't address, and some of it probably could have done with addressing. But the most important points were addressed. At least for me anyway. Many of these points that were covered are also representative of many of the same talking points and arguments that I see commonly come from other atheists. One interesting thing to point out here is that in the video it is the Christian being criticized that comes across as the more reasonable one. Sure, you may argue that if he thinks Christianity is true and believes God exists, then he's not reasonable. However, his arguments about burden of proof are far more reasonable than Creaky Binder makes out. The the Christian also appears to understand the concept of discursive burden of proof, unlike Creaky Blinder. Believing that someone is not reasonable or not rational as a whole because of a certain belief is a pretty faulty belief. Just as believing that somebody must be rational or be correct because they hold a certain belief, or should I say lacks a certain belief, that too is also a faulty belief.
as could be seen from me pointing out that Creaky Blinder was wrong about there being only one definition of atheism, even atheists can be wrong about atheism as a whole. Many atheists will simply repeat bad information with unearned confidence, and many buy into it because they've heard it repeated often, and repeated with that same unearned confidence. We also saw how Creaky Blinder claimed that the burden of proof was on the one making the claims, and then after making many claims, and even admitting that they were claims, he did his best to try to reframe them as non-claims. Just like many other atheists, rather than discharging that burden of proof, there was an attempt to dodge that burden of proof through that reframing. This seems to be a popular thing in the atheist community. Lots of arguments about how the burden of proof is on the one making the claims, and lots of arguments designed to exempt themselves from that same argument that the burden of proof is on the ones making the claims. While there are a lot of cries about how atheists do not attempt to escape their burden of proof, if you pay attention you'll find lots of examples of it happening. Like I said in the intro, Creaky Blinder seems like a pretty likable guy, and he obviously has a lot of charisma. And while being likable and having lots of charisma can be useful when trying to convince someone of some argument, that doesn't mean that the arguments are any good. As could be seen, when breaking those arguments down and honestly assessing them, they begin to fall apart. Just like so many other of my fellow atheists' arguments do. Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate you giving me your time. Until next time, take care. See you soon, hopefully. Bye.